We're continuing our long IFR cross-country flight, which we planned in our last video as part of a series where we're going through the full flight planning process and flight to each airport with instrument procedures at each one. For the full series, check out the page on our website linked here or in the description. You can play along with us on your own in the sim or fly the real thing if you're nearby. We're on the ramp at our home airport, Renton, Washington, and we'll be getting our IFR clearance and preparing to depart. We're going to start by grabbing the ATIS, which is on our taxiway diagram as 126.95. We'll put that into COM2, flip it active, and turn on receive on our audio panel. So the winds are out of the north and we have Yankee. An often overlooked part of IFR flight planning is checking for departure procedures. Renton has two, one for each runway. For the north facing runway 34, we use the Bellevue 4 which involves turning to heading 350 and climbing to 3000, expecting radar vectors on course. This is generally to keep us away from the surface Bravo around SeaTac, which is directly to our west, and some terrain right on the extended center line of the runway. Let's get our clearance. Here at the Delta Airport Renton, that will happen on ground, 121.6. We put it into COM1 and flip it active. We've got our scratch pad out and we'll be using the CRAFT acronym to write down our clearance. Renton Ground, Skyhawk 518 Foxtrot Tango, request IFR to Olympia, information Yankee. November 518 Foxtrot Tango, Renton Ground, clear to Olympia Airport, Bellevue 4 departure, whom, direct destination, maintain 3000, expect 4010 minutes after departure, departure frequency 119.2, squawk 2534. Clear to Olympia, Bellevue 4 departure, whom, direct, maintain 3000, expect 4000, departure 119.2, squawk 2534, 518 Foxtrot Tango. Number 518 Foxtrot Tango, reback correct, advise ready to taxi. So we'll put our squawk code into the box and make sure it's on altitude mode. Let's start loading our flight plan in. Here's how that works on the Garmin 530. First, hit the FPL key, then push the knob on the right to bring up the cursor. We'll use the outer and inner knobs to set first our departure point, Renton, K-R-N-T, and hit enter. We have a departure procedure in our clearance, but there's no fix associated with it, just radar vectors. In fact, what often happens on this procedure is that we get vectors right over the top of the field at SeaTac. Let's set our next fix along the route, whom. Remember that we picked this point because it's the initial approach fix for the ILS approach we're planning to shoot into Olympia, and it just happens to be the direction we'll be facing after crossing over SeaTac westbound. Finally, we'll put our destination in Olympia, K-O-L-M. We filed the flight plan as just this leg to Olympia, though we're planning on continuing to McMinnville after that, and then back to Renton, which is what we have on foreflight. But we'll just keep the active route in the Garmin. We're ready to taxi. Let's have a look at the diagram to anticipate our instructions. Runway 34 is in use. The parallel taxiway, Alpha, brings us to the hold short there, so that's likely to be our instruction. Renton Ground Skyhawk 518 Foxtrot Tango is at pro flight, ready to taxi for IFR departure. Number 8 Foxtrot Tango, runway 34, taxi via Alpha. Runway 34 via Alpha, 518 Foxtrot Tango. So as expected, we get a right turn to go down to runway 34. As we taxi, we want to do some instrument checks for IFR. We'll turn left and right, so-called serpinating our way down the taxiway. Check in and make sure the AI stays erect, the turn coordinator moves with the turn while the ball moves opposite, and that the DG and compass both indicate the direction of our turns. The airspeed indicator should read zero, as should the ASI, and the altimeter, when properly set, should read within 75 feet of the field elevation of 32. When we get past all those Boeing aircraft position here at Renton and get to the hold short line, we'll be doing our pre-takeoff checklists. We have tower on standby, so we'll flip it to active and then set the assigned departure 119.2 on standby. This is going to be a rather busy flight with the vectors at SeaTac, followed by a pretty quick clearance onto the ILS and then a circle to land on the opposite runway, or a rejection of the ILS where we'll need to plan the RNAV to runway 35 instead. Our first step is to fly heading 350 which we'll turn to after passing 400 AGL and contact and departure as we climb to 3000. So take a deep breath and get ready to contact tower. Renton Tower, Skyhawk 518 Foxtrot Tango, holding shorter runway 34, ready for IFR departure. Cessna 518 Foxtrot Tango, Renton Tower, winds 360 at 08, runway 34, clear for takeoff. Runway 34, clear for takeoff, 518 Foxtrot Tango. As briefed, we maintain runway heading until 400 feet above the departure and then make a slight right turn to heading 350 as we climb to 3000. We get our handoff to approach. 
The number 518 Foster Shot Tango contact approach. Over to approach 518 Foster Shot Tango. Seattle approach Skyhawk 518 Foster Shot Tango 800 climbing 3000 Bellevue 4 departure. The number 518 Foster Shot Tango Seattle approach ident. We press ident on the transponder and wait to get radar identified. November 518 Foster Shot Tango radar contact turn right heading 210 maintain 4000. Right 210 4000 518 Foster Shot Tango. Make sure you actually make the turn to the right here. The quick way would be going to the left, but they want us to turn all the way around to the right to avoid SeaTac. We're being vectored right away and given our climb to 4000. The 210 heading is intended to get us over the field at SeaTac. Since we know this, we can employ a little bit of professional discretion here. Radar vectors are given based on ground track, since that's what a controller's radar scope is based off of. But the vector is assigning a heading. Any wind drift may cause our actual track to be different than what the controller might want. As we roll out on that 210 heading, we notice, because we're in VMC, or maybe your instructor notices because you have the hood on, that we won't be crossing midfield. You might anticipate then being told to correct 10 degrees to the right, which is what ends up happening. Vectors aren't going to be an exact science like being clear direct to a fix or along an airway, so a little inside knowledge can help. This can also be useful when you're getting vectors to intercept a final approach course. ATC will typically give you a downwind vector and a base vector parallel and perpendicular to the runway heading, respectively. If wind drift causes you to stray from those tracks, you can expect or even ask for a correction. After we pass over the field, approach is going to hand us off to another controller handling the west side of SeaTac. Remember 518 Foster Tango, contact approach now on 120.1. 120.1, 518 Foster Tango. Seattle Approach, Skyhawk 518 Foster Shot Tango, 4000, request ILS runway 17 from whom, circle the 35. The number 518 Foster Shot Tango, Seattle Approach, Seattle Altimeter 3010, make that request with the final controller, but for now you can expect that. We're going to leave it there for this video and pick up the next one with our approach into Olympia. You can head over to the website now and watch that, click the link here or in the description to go see the full flight series. See you there.